everybody, welcome back to Recordology, and welcome back to our kitchen set here in our 10,000 square foot studio. Glad to have you back. Now, today we're going to take a look at this turntable, a brand new record player from Digit Now. Digit Now? Digit Now? I don't know. Anyway, we've done a few of their products, and it's been some interesting stuff, so check out those reviews if you want to see them. I'm excited to do a record player review for the first time in quite a while. We haven't been doing as much. If you're noticing, there's been almost no Victrola or Crosley on here for the last few months. And if you want to know why that is, and there is a reason, you may check out a future show I'm thinking about doing. Oops. A future show possibly talking about kind of behind the scenes what's been transpiring with those guys. Would love to continue partnering with them. And uh, we'll see if that happens. I don't know, it may not. But regardless, I'm here for you guys. We're here to have fun. And today we're taking a look at this, which proves to be a very interesting product. Either way, I mean, if it's good or bad, it's going to be interesting. So what we have here is something I've never seen before. This is a turntable player. 33, 45, 78 RPM selectable. It's a turntable and cassette and radio player and recorder. Does not record records. I'm presuming it's not a lathe, but I believe we have Bluetooth or some kind of wireless functionality there. Looks like it's got a cassette on the side, a speaker, and some cool jazz. We'll have to see exactly what's included. Um, because it has Bluetooth, we might have an RF, RF, an FCC ID, so we might be able to look up and see who actually makes this thing. But yeah, this ought to be really interesting. I, I have no idea what to expect. So we're going to unbox it. We're going to review it and test everything out. I've got all kinds of cool media here. I will not be putting my Enoch Light quadraphonic record on this to start. I will <laughs> we don't want to repeat mistakes, right? We don't want to repeat mistakes. So here we go. Everything's packed in there. Like I said, Digit Now is a brand that we've reviewed in the past. Box is empty. It's interesting. It kind of looks on camera like it's dark outside, but it's not. It's actually broad daylight, but I'm using the ring light to kind of fill in the front, so that may be why. So we've got a couple of foam blocks. Set those aside. Seems to be well packaged, and people tease me that I always emphasize that or even mention it, but I think it's important. So we've got a user manual. Multi-function turntable player. Okay. Got a remote control. Never quite understood. I mean, I guess if you had this like, okay, I guess I could see an applicator. The way I use turntables, I'm usually within arm's reach, so I don't use a remote control or need one, but I could see the possibility there. This is a thank you card and some uh, tech support info on the back. And the manual. And it looks like there's some kind of color printed thing here. So let's start with this. Interesting. So I like the fact that it's got pictures. I think that's cool. Replacement installation of the belt of record player. So if you've never done this before, there's some instructions on how to do that. I like color pictures. This is always a tricky step, getting the belt onto the sub platter and lowering it while it, you know, trying to keep it from slipping off. So let's go ahead and see what we got here for the device itself. The form factor on this is, oops, I guess I'm pulling off the uh, dust covers plastic as well. This is really strange. The form factor is almost identical to my Vibe, that $35 player that was my first record player. It's like, literally the same size ah, new electronic smell i love it so here we go i mean it's got it's got the same lid too it's got the same plinth so instead of it being it's not a floating one it's literally there's some suspension on the platter but the uh mechanism back here is fixed you got three speed selectable auto stop on and off does have a queuing lever we've got our little chuo denshi clone cartridge. Yeah, it's kind of hanging low. It's like resting on the plinth. Interesting. Is it on the... No, it's on there, right? We've got our auto stop cassette player. 
common mechanism right there and a speaker on the side. These actually, I don't mind these whatsoever. I think they're kind of cool. It's a fully automatic, well not fully, it's an auto stop, but automatic play. Cassette player, no Dolby, they don't license that anymore. On the front we've got um, the knobs, the source select, SD card USB. And if we were talking, somebody on my channel was commenting the other day about how they didn't realize that something they had had for years had this like kind of peel off thing and they're wondering why the screen was kind of foggy looking because they never tell you that you have to pull this stuff off <laughs> and now it's nice and shiny so there you go i like the idea of it having both a usb and a sd card going around the side here got another speaker on the bottom we got a masonite bottom panel some foam adhesive pads What's around back here? Not much. Oh, interesting. There's no audio out. That's really weird. You've got power and an FM antenna, presumably. And besides that, there is no audio out. Is there a headphone jack? Yes, okay, so there's your audio out. So you could cable this to a set of external speakers and it's got an aux in. Cool, all right, let me go ahead and get the rest of it unpacked and get settled in here. And we'll go ahead and give it a test. Okay, let's start with what I would consider the least exciting thing, and that's the radio. So press on five seconds. Got our little blue indicator or a little screen here. Looks like left and right for sources. Phono, not sure what that is. No, there's AM radio. So the, the reality is, yes, Bob, we really need to think of this app. And FM radio, maybe? We go to the uh, Colorado Public Radio here. I listen to Colorado Public Radio at night, sometimes music, but mostly talk. 90, I think it's 90.1. This is a digital tuner. You can tell by that clipping, which is okay. I don't, I don't personally mind that. 90 point. Some of the algorithms are becoming so much more obvious. It's undeniable. Both speakers work, which is a good thing. You have to check. I've had it go the other way. Next, let's try the aux in. thought we would try something different in terms of musical content today. So I'm going to go ahead and put aux in there. And for a source, I'm actually going to use my Game Boy Color, my GB Boy Color, with built-in Game Boy games, and we're actually running... This, it is my Japanese um, Mario 2, Mario Land 2. I didn't specifically seek out a Japanese copy, but it's what was available. I'm not a good player at this. You can see that scratch my screen is there. That's annoying. Sound, you know, it sounds okay. I mean, it's small speakers. Sounds like small speakers. You know what I mean? You're not going to blow anybody's wig off with this. Okay, let's, I guess let's try the cassette next. So unplug that, turn the volume down. Let's test out this cassette deck here. And for this, I've got some wonderful music to enjoy. German band marches. This should be perfect for this. So again, automatic mechanism. I'm gonna flip it over to tape input and it should start right away. Okay. That doesn't look good, does it? What the heck? Try that again. Okay, it seems to be working now. OK. 
Okay, it's clicking and now it's stopping. It does not want to work right. What the heck? Let me try fast forwarding. Should be a two position switch halfway in for fast forward, which is not doing. Okay, now it's fast forwarding. Come on, didn't want to give me my tape back. Oh boy. Okay, yeah. All right. Oh boy. Yeah. Tape player does not pass inspection, ladies and gentlemen. So that's not good. Now I will say this. A lot of times these tape mechanisms take some breaking in to sound decent. A lot of the, in fact, I commented on uh, the video that uh, Techmon did the other day about that cheap cassette player. A lot, and I think one of you guys told me this actually. A lot of times the wow and flutter gets better over time as those belts kind of get stretched evenly. But it shouldn't eat your tapes right out of the box, right? <laughs> So that, I don't know, should I put Cindy Lopper in there? Oh, we'll put it in. We'll take one for the team. We'll put Cindy Lopper in there real quick. Yeah. That's not good. Okay, well, radio's okay. Tape player doesn't work. Now let's look at the turntable and see what happens. Before next. Judy enters stage right, we're going to check the tracking force. With our handy dandy digital gauge here. Surely this will be over five grams, so we're going to calibrate this to zero using the five gram weight. Therefore, we need to add five to whatever value it gives us. I'm going to put this over right here. A lot of people say you can't do that because it's not the right thickness of the record. Actually, if you hang it off the platter, that's close enough to two um, millimeters, and that's okay. All right, so let's zero this out. All right, we're zeroed out. Let's raise... The tone arm, take off the guard first. Now we'll also check the material to see if it's diamond or sapphire. I'm guessing it's probably sapphire. We'll rotate this. And we will lower this. Again, so anything, we have to add five to whatever this says. That's what I'm trying to say. Wow, actually not as high as I thought. About 5.7 grams. Now, when I'm talking about record skipping, a lot of times these don't go all the way down, so you push down here, so that might be holding it up. Oh, what do you know? It was. So it's a little bit more like six grams. Still not terrible. We've seen worse. But yeah, a lot of times people are like, my record skipping, what can I do? First thing is to push down right there because a lot of times they don't lower out of the way. This one seems to have like nothing. Okay, let me get this out of the way first. Look how, oops. I mean, there's like, this is super, it's cheap. I'm just gonna say that, it's cheap. I mean, it's an entry level unit and that's what we do on this show. But this is, uh, let's just see some grease down there. It's not the highest quality one I've ever seen. It's also not the worst. The cartridge itself looks like, why is this so low? Look at the rake angle of that cantilever, you guys. <laughs> That's not good. All right, we're gonna, let's see what this needle is. Okay, so here's the stylus. At first glance, I was like, maybe that is diamond, but it does have a slight reddish tint, so it's probably sapphire or ruby. I am impressed that it has the, the steel cantilever, which is good. I mean, some of those have <laughs> plastic, which is the bottom of the barrel, and it's got a, a rubber boot where the cantilever connects to the housing. The rake angle of that cantilever is amazing. So let me go ahead and get it put back together and we'll give it a test. I first put this record on here. This is what happened. It literally wouldn't go down. It was catching right up there. Look at that. That is weird. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's like there's not enough room for the record. You can edge it underneath, but gum, that is close. Look how close that is. This thing is compact. Okay, let me give it a quick dusting, give it a fair shot, and we'll test it out. Okay, I think this is our best bet. I think this is our best bet, so here we go. First of all, <laughs> there's like no damping effect whatsoever. I flipped the uh, 
cueing lever and it slams down. Next, look how this thing kind of shimmies a little bit. It's loose. And it's not actually because of where it's connected to the tone arm. It's on that back end. Wow, and Flutter is off the charts. I don't see any damage so far. Hmm. Okay. These should be able to track at six grams. I mean, this cartridge is designed for that. So I always love this too. So when you're done with it, you want to stop it. But as soon as you let go, it doesn't want to stay in the rest position and it starts the record again. So you have to literally drop it down, lock it before you can pull the record out and put it back on like that. All right, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna test it a little bit more off camera. There is a bit of graying. I believe I'm perceiving that again. Maybe I've just never looked at this under these kind of lighting conditions before, but I feel like it is definitely putting a mark on there. I would not put any prized record on here. That is for sure. The sound is extremely warbly. So the wow and flutter is is pretty high. And what causes that is, you know, a cheap motor, although all motors are gonna have variance in speed fluctuations that causes that wow and flutter. But if you have a plastic cheapo platter that doesn't weigh anything, then it's not there's no there's not gonna be any mass inertia to keep it steady and smooth. So that's why that happens. So yeah, so far. I'm not impressed with this one, you guys. <laughs> Let's check the motor speeds. So this one's so bad, you guys, that my wife literally is like, shut it off. Not just because of Judy Collins, but because of the wow and flutter was so bad. But hey, I call them like I see them, you guys. I call them like I see them. Nobody is gonna be more friendly to an entry level unit than me. You guys know that. So if I say I wouldn't recommend it, just take my advice. You should always take my advice because I never steer you wrong. Okay, we are going to check the speed using the strobe mat, starting off with 33. The place to look is going to be this ring right here. It's actually not bad in terms of speed. A little fast, it's marching to the left there. Let's go ahead and go up to 45. Next ring in. Did, the, oh, did it change speeds? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, I the wrong switch. Okay, okay, I was like, uh... All right, next speed. So that's going to be this ring right here. It's a little bit faster. And then 78. There's that inner ring there. A little fast still. Not too bad. Actually, I've seen a lot worse when it comes to motor speed. When you get up to 78 RPM, though, you can really hear that motor grinding. <clears throat> Couldn't quite hear it that much because the microphone I'm using is facing towards the device. Trust me, it's not gonna make, you're not gonna be like, oh, it sounded great in person. I don't know what he's talking about. Let's take my word for it. You can skip this one, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and test the micro SD capability here. So I got a blank card and we are just gonna record off the radio, hopefully here. So let me get over to radio again. It does Bluetooth, we won't review that. I mean, it's, it's not gonna sound any different than what we already heard. So here's the radio. I'm gonna press record. Is that how you do it? Okay, so we're recording onto our SD card. The day is supported by Progressive Insurance, protecting your business with specialized coverages for your commercial vehicles. More at progressivecommercial.com. Yeah, I recorded about 50 seconds of audio off the radio. I checked it out on my computer, and it looks like it's 128K, which for an MP3 isn't terrible. That's sort of the bottom end of good or acceptable. If you get under that, and I've seen some that do, some of these will do 96K. Uh, but at 128K, you shouldn't hear any artifacting with most, most typical average daily use type of stuff, especially spoken word, which is what I usually use mine for. So... That's okay, that's actually a good thing. So let's go ahead and go to the SD card mode here and we'll just play it right back. So I was pleasantly surprised about that. And there it is, so that's playing off of the SD card. Pretty quiet though on here. Definitely too quiet. 
But the resolution is okay. The resolution is okay, and that's the biggest thing for here. So you could use it to encode if the turntable wasn't so poor and the cassette tape wasn't so poor. I do see a use for encoding a aux input right to digital. Just forget about the other things, and you could use this for that. Would that justify the purchase of this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I want to find out who makes this thing, but before that, I do want to show the remote real quick. It does have an EQ capability on here that's not available on the front panel. I want to show you guys what the inside of these cassette mechanisms look like. So there is the tray. You'll see that white spindle there in the moat in the middle. That is a single spindle. They don't need two because it only goes one direction. So down there at the bottom of the screen, you see that silver thing with the black belt around it. That is going to be the flywheel which on the other end of it is the cap stand there in the center of your screen. Yeah, I'm just poking through a little bit. The reason why the spindle and the cap stand are not extending very high is because this mechanism drops down. And then to the right there is our head, our magnetic head, which is going to be a mono head. Regardless, this particular one doesn't work. So anyway, there you go. Okay, I stand corrected. There's the head and it is a stereo head. I believe that is a stereo head. So again, in theory, if this thing works, sorry it's so foggy, I'm zoomed in at a really weird angle. But assuming all the other stuff wasn't an issue, you would get stereo sound, which is rare on an entry-level tape deck. Other fun things I discovered. So this is the side of the dust cover, and that right there is the uh, cueing lever, which is rubbing on the inside of the dust cover and scratching it up. <laughs> Look at that. It's just ridiculous, you know what I mean? There's no excuse for that kind of stuff. There's no excuse. And while we're at it, there is the cartridge, the Chuo Denshi clone, which in and of itself isn't terrible. Again, the rake angle on that thing though, man, it's almost scratching the plinth just in the rest position. It does say it has a diamond, so that might actually be a diamond stylus. So you do see some efforts for not going bottom of the barrel, which is good. But overall, it's fraught with issues. There's all kinds of problems on this. So far, I have not been able to find an FCC ID on this thing. So we're not going to know who made it, but it doesn't really matter. Either it's good or it's not. <laughs> this particular one is not recommended. Unfortunately, again, I'm always championing entry-level equipment, and there is good entry-level equipment out there. This particular one is not one of those devices. It would sure have been great if it was, but it isn't. So... As such, I will not be putting a link down below, but I thought this is interesting to take a look at something like this. Either way, you know what I mean? However it goes, however it goes. So this may be the last digit now turntable we see, but actually most companies are actually very, they've been very good about being, you know what, if it's not good, tell us. We, that's how we need to know and we'll you know, make improvements. So hopefully they're that way as well. Although we've been critical, I think, of their things in the past. You know, If it doesn't live up to what it's supposed to do, then it doesn't live up to what it's supposed to do. So anyway, that's going to do it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Happy record hunting. By the way, if you would consider our buy me a coffee service, link in the description below, as well as our show merchandise where you can pick up some cool recordology themed merch. But most of all, just give me a thumbs up. Share this out. Tell your friends. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. would love to have you on board for our live shows, our giveaways, all kinds of cool stuff. But that's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.